In October 2021, a report on the U.S. Futurism website claimed that the interior design of China's space station looks like an Apple store, and it puts the International Space Station to shame. The Orbital Lab boasts a number of tools and designs that set it apart from the ISS, which is fairly old and slated to be retired within the next decade. Not only does Tiangong have spacious bunks for its astronauts, but it also has a sleek space gym and separate living spaces for each crew member, with a minimalist white interior design that looks more like an Apple store than a cramped space habitat. Compare that to the ISS, which looks downright obsolete in comparison. In fact, not only the media, but even Scott Kelly, an astronaut who once worked on the International Space Station, expressed his envy for the spacious and tidy environment inside the China Space Station. The ISS's sleeping quarters are roughly the size of a phone booth, paling in comparison to Tiangong's beds. In fact, it's so cramped that astronauts are sometimes forced to sleep kind of together, wherever, NASA astronaut Scott Kelly said. On top of that is the ISS's, shall we say, cluttered interior design. Much of its space is filled with a hodgepodge of wires, computers, and miscellaneous hardware together. So why does the International Space Station look so dirty and crowded? Why is there such a big contrast between the two? Hi. Welcome to Hot Topics Time, and let's move on to today's topic. The International Space Station is a large-scale international cooperation project led by the United States and Russia and participated by many countries around the world. The main purpose is to create a large-scale orbiting space platform that allows people to carry out multiple scientific experiments, in a microgravity environment. From the perspective of the composition of the International Space Station, it can be divided into two parts. The first part is centered on the Russian area functional cargo warehouse. The American Experimental Module, the Japanese Nozomi Experimental Module, and the European Space Agency's Columbus Experimental Module are all docked with it through the relevant node module. The second part is composed of the central truss in the United States and the remote-controlled robotic arm system in Canada, with solar arrays on it. It is not difficult to see that the United States and Russia are playing the main role in the construction of the space station. As for other countries, they make auxiliary contributions in some small areas. In general, there are different contractors and maintainers for different modules of the International Space Station. In this case, it is difficult to have a unified standard to bind various countries. In addition, due to the long time in orbit of the International Space Station, the equipment in it has aged. With the first module launched in 1998, the ISS was only meant to have a 30-year lifespan. That means its intended death date is a mere seven years from now, and no offense to the spacecraft, but it's definitely showing its age. For these reasons, the interior looks messy, with various lines exposed outside, and the passage is very narrow. In addition, even if the capacity of the International Space Station reaches 13 people, countries will inevitably grab seats. In a situation where there are many people and few places, the International Space Station certainly does not give too much consideration to the daily life of the astronauts, so that they have to squeeze into a small and confined space to sleep. However, it's enough of a mess to make you wonder whether or not it poses a hazard to everyone on board. After all, if there's an emergency, there have been plenty lately, an astronaut might have to navigate a dizzying array of wires and tools to fix it. In comparison, the environment of China Tiangong Space Station is very good, and was even praised by the US media as an Apple store. So, how good is the interior of the China Space Station? Anyone who has watched the live broadcast of the Shenzhou astronauts traveling in space should be impressed by the interior of the Chinese Space Station, which is mainly based on blue and white. Compared with the situation where the wires of the International Space Station are exposed everywhere, the Tiangong Space Station has carried out a unified storage process for some devices and wires. In addition, the designers of the Tiangong Space Station have considered that the astronauts will live in orbit for several months, or even half a year, so they have also put a lot of effort into arranging their daily life. Judging from the internal division of the Tianhe core cabin, the designer has divided multiple areas according to different functions. For example, working area, sleeping area, sanitation area, dining area, exercise area, etc. Taking the sleeping area that American astronaut Scott Kelly envied, 
the astronauts in the Tiangong space station all have independent, sleeping cabins. Astronauts can not only lie down and sleep in it, but also store some personal items in the cabin. This sleeping area is like an independent, small bedroom, with a certain degree of privacy and concealment, which avoids the embarrassment of astronauts of different genders sleeping together. In general, the interior design of China Tiangong Space Station is more attentive and humane. In addition to taking into account the necessary functions, it also tries to make the astronauts feel as comfortable as possible. So, why is there such a big difference between the International Space Station and the China Space Station? As we mentioned just now, the International Space Station is a cooperative project, so more often everyone needs to discuss the construction of the structure. But no matter how much cooperation is discussed, differences between countries cannot be avoided. This difference will be easily reflected in the appearance of the space station. Even if NASA deliberately sets certain fixed standards, it cannot make all the details consistent. Because of this, when you shuttle through different sections of the International Space Station, you will feel the difference in style changes. And it is this difference that makes the International Space Station look messy. As for China's Tiangong Space Station, this problem obviously does not exist, because this space station is independently designed and constructed by China, and there is no need to consider the aesthetics of other countries. In this case, the standardization of facilities inside the Chinese space station is very well done, making people feel that it is one, and there is no disharmony. Secondly, there is a huge difference in the construction time of the two space stations. The International Space Station was built at the end of the last century. It stands to reason that it should have been decommissioned by now, but it is still struggling to meet certain needs. The construction of China's Tiangong Space Station has only started in recent years. It is a decade younger than the International Space Station, and there is a big difference in the use time. Therefore, it is normal for the International Space Station to have aging equipment and an old environment. After all, it has been in orbit for so long. If it takes another 10 years, the interior of the China Space Station may not be as new as it is now. Up to now, 27 countries have formally applied to enter the Chinese Space Station for space research and China has agreed to the cooperation application of 16 of them. With the efforts of the people of all countries, the human space industry will surely enter a new era. The development of the space station marks a step forward in human exploration of space. I believe that in the future, we can use the space station as a transfer station to travel to farther places, and even realize the dream of interstellar immigration. At the end of the day, though, we still love the ISS for being a place astronauts could call home for decades. But now times are changing, and it's not the coolest spot in orbit anymore. Well, thanks for listening. See you next time.